Hello, my name is Gerardo Herrera, and this is Video Talk 2 uh, for the Scholarly Practitioner uh, class. So the question that was asked was that, well, the scenario that was presented was that a colleague states that the study of psychoanalysis proves hypnosis works in the case of multiple personality disorder. Um, if a colleague of mine were to uh, present this to me, um, I would be very cautious about believing such a statement, especially basing, its, uh, basing it on one study. Um, first, the first thing I would do was I would try to identify if there's any errors in thinking. And in this case, it would be a fallacy uh, known as post hoc ergo propter hoc, which means after this, therefore because of this. Um, I've had uh, experience with this fallacy in, in, in my personal life with family members. For example, I had an aunt um, that passed away from diabetes. Um, she was taking, getting dialysis towards the end of her life. Um, she went to church one day and the pastor prayed over her and told her she was cured by prayer. Um, she believed it and she went back and did, stopped taking dialysis and eventually passed away because uh, she wasn't getting uh, what she needed. Um, another example is uh, sometimes I have family members that promote uh, herbal remedies for certain ailments, for example. Um, I know a person that has uh, cancer and uh, they're told to take a certain uh, herbal, herbal tea because it's supposed to help them um, get better or, or get rid of the cancer. Um, and even though it does go into remission, it's not the, key, the tea that's causing it, it's actually um, what the doctors are doing, which is the uh, chemotherapy, but the person believes that the teas are working. Um, and so that is a, a fallacy of thinking. Um, the second thing I would do once I've identified the fallacy is, let's see if, there, if the study that she's claiming um, is true. So I would read the study myself and examine the evidence and examine the bibliography and look to see um, what is the support for this um, uh, argument. Um, I learned this uh, in graduate school. Um, we as historians were taught to uh, look at the bibliography to see what the sources are and so uh, whenever a, a historian is presenting a claim we have to um, evaluate whether that claim has any validity or not. And the way we do that is we look at the bibliography to see what research the historian has done, where he got his sources from, what are the primary documents, secondary documents, so on and so forth. So I would follow the same line of thinking um, in this case. I would read the study and I would uh, examine the sources and I would examine the evidence and, the, and what the study is about. Um, the third thing I would do is I would question the efficacy of hypnosis itself. Um, I've had uh, personal experience with hypnosis. And based on my personal experience, I would uh, the, I do not think hypnosis is as, is as effective as um, some people say. Uh, when I was uh, a kid, um, I had to uh, see a psychotherapist, and uh, he performed the hypnosis on me, and it didn't do anything. Um, it, I guess it didn't work. If that if he thought it would, it didn't work. And so since then, I've always been dubious about the efficacy of hypnosis, and so I would question that. And then I would look at the source. That's the last thing I would do. Uh, is my colleague a gullible person? Is my colleague uh, well-versed in uh, psychotherapy or psychology? Uh, what do they know? Uh, what's their background on that? Why were they reading this study? What is the purpose of this study? And so I would question the source of this information. Um, I have colleagues sometimes that they, you know, they present a certain evidence for certain um, ideas that they have, but they're not um, once you look at the, the claim, it's not very well grounded. So I would look at that as well. Um, so those are the steps that I would take um, in trying to determine whether the uh, claims of my colleague are correct, whether this study does prove that hypnosis is effective for multiple personality disorder. Um, and that's basically the, the, how I would, the steps I would follow. Um, so that is my entry for uh, video talk two. This is Gerardo Herrera. Thank you.